most useful sensors you can use with the Arduino is the DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor. It's accurate and really easy to use, which is why they're so popular in weather stations and IoT projects. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a couple different variations of the DHT11 on the Arduino. Then we'll see how to print the humidity and temperature measurements to the serial monitor. This is a breakout board version of the DHT11. It has three pins. One for the signal. One for VCC. And one for ground. The breakout board version comes with a pull-up resistor. The temperature and humidity sensing elements are inside the plastic case. This is the humidity sensing element. On the back of the chip, there's a surface-mounted analog thermistor that provides temperature readings. This chip right here is an 8-bit microcontroller that converts the analog humidity and temperature data into a digital signal that's sent to the Arduino. This is the breakout board version, but you can also find DHT11s in a standalone configuration. Standalone DHT11s don't have a pull-up resistor, so you have to add your own. This version has four pins. This is the VCC pin. This is the signal pin. This pin isn't used. And this is the ground pin. I'll show you how to set up both of these versions in a minute. But first let's look at how the DHT11 works and what kind of data it's gonna provide. The DHT11 provides temperature readings in degrees Celsius. The temperature calculations are performed by the microcontroller on both the standalone and breakout board versions. The humidity is provided in relative humidity. Relative humidity is a measure of the amount of water vapor in air versus the saturation point of water vapor in air. Relative humidity is basically the percentage of moisture in the air. Zero relative humidity means the air is completely dry. 100% relative humidity means the air is at its saturation point. At the saturation point, water vapor starts to condense and forms water drops. The DHT11 measures humidity by detecting the electrical resistance between two electrodes. If you look closely at the humidity sensing element, you can see the two electrodes. The electrodes are separated by a material that absorbs moisture. When the material absorbs water, ions get released from it, which makes the conductivity between the electrodes increase. So higher relative humidity causes the resistance between the electrodes to decrease. And a lower relative humidity causes the resistance between the electrodes to increase. The microcontroller detects the change in resistance between the two electrodes and calculates relative humidity from it. The DHT11 measures temperature with a surface-mounted negative temperature coefficient thermistor, similar to the one we learned about in the last video. In the DHT11 though, the microcontroller reads the thermistor's resistance and calculates the temperature, so we don't have to. Okay, now let's see how to connect one of these to the Arduino. To connect the breakout version to the Arduino, connect the leftmost pin to digital pin 7 of the Arduino, the middle pin to VCC, and the rightmost pin to ground. To connect the standalone DHT11, you need to place a 10 kilo ohm pull-up resistor between the VCC pin and the signal pin. Then connect the leftmost pin to VCC, the second pin to digital pin 7 on the Arduino, and the rightmost pin to ground. The third pin isn't used. Okay, now we're ready to start programming. Well, almost. The digital signal containing the temperature and humidity data is sent to the Arduino with a unique protocol. It's not ITC, not SPI, and not UART. 
The datasheet explains it in detail if you're interested, but luckily there's a library that takes care of decoding it. It's called the DHT lib library. You can get the library from GitHub at this link. To install it, you have to save the .h and .cpp code to new text files, the same way we installed library code from GitHub in the video on libraries. After you get the library installed, we can take a look at the sketch. We include the DHT lib library with a hash include and dht.h inside the angle brackets. Now we create a DHT object from the DHT class. Next, we define the pin number that the DHT11 sensor pin is connected to. You may not have seen a pin declared this way before. This isn't the recommended way to do it, but I want to show it to you because it does come up from time to time. Hash define lets you store a constant value without using up any program memory. In this case, it's a pin number. Hash define is executed by the precompiler, which happens before the main compiler runs. The precompiler searches the sketch for the defined name and replaces it with the value assigned to it. So in this case, every place the word dht11 underscore pin appears in the sketch, the precompiler will replace it with the number 7. If you're not careful, the precompiler could replace text you didn't want changed. Instead of using hash define, use the const variable qualifier. Declaring a variable with const int doesn't use up any RAM either, and it can prevent a lot of strange compiler errors. We're going to output the temperature and humidity readings to the serial monitor, so we initialize it in the setup section. We don't need to use the pin mode function here, it's already set in the library source file. In the loop, the first thing we do is declare a local int variable called chk. Read11 is the function that reads the DHT11's humidity and temperature measurements. So this will take a reading from the DHT11 underscore pin constant, pin 7, and store the information in the chk variable. Now to print the temperature, I'm going to serial print some text that says temperature. Then I'm going to serial print dht.temperature. dht.temperature holds the temperature measurement. Temperature is a public variable that's declared inside the dht class. We can access it with the dht object we created. Accessing public variables from a class is similar to accessing functions from a class. We just write the name of the object. In this case, it's dht. Then we write a period followed by the name of the public variable. DHT11 outputs temperature in Celsius, but if you want Fahrenheit, you can use DHT.temperature as a variable in the conversion equation. To print out the relative humidity, I'm first going to print some text that says humidity. Then I'll serial print the humidity variable. Humidity is another public variable that was declared inside the DHT class. We access it with the DHT object, just like we did with the temperature variable. Okay, now let's see what this looks like when it's running. So here I have a standalone DHT11 connected to my Arduino. Here's my pull-up resistor. The ambient temperature is reading 26, 27 degrees Celsius, and the ambient humidity is reading 58%. I'm going to place a paper towel that's been moistened with warm water on the sensor. When I remove the paper towel, it takes a while for the humidity and temperature to return to normal. The humidity sensing element is saturated with moisture and it's gonna take some time to dry out. Great, so it's working. In the next video, we're gonna look at another great weather sensor called the BMP-180.
The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture and displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder.